Lamont, is Lamont Styles coming in to present? He's right here. He's here. Oh, okay. In person. I thought I was getting out of this. Okay. Story. Okay, I think we're ready, right? Okay, good evening. It's five o'clock, and this is the meeting of Parks, Recreation, Human Services, and Public Safety. Today, I'm going to be covering for Council Member Jack Walsh, who is on Zoom and could not be here in person, so um, we will get started. Um, we also have Council Member Norton, who is a member of this committee, Council President um, Linda Kochmar, and Deputy Mayor Susan Honda. Um, with that, is there anything we uh, people are interested in adding to the agenda, or is this are we good to get started? Okay. Um, are there any public comments in person or online? No, there's not. Okay, there's no public comments. With that, we will go to the next item. Um, committee business. First item on the agenda is approval of April 12, 2022 minutes. Um, anybody want to? I move to approve the minutes from. I, I, oh, I, wasn't, I wasn't here, I so I can't move. Were you on, were you on Zoom? No. Okay, I, uh, Jack has to be okay I, I, well, I move that they be adopted. I second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, with that. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> next slide. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, um, aye. <laughs> Motion passed unanimously. Next item on the agenda is access to city facilities for select community groups. And we have Lamont Siles here to present. So please, if you'd step up to the podium. We'll put them on their desks, so. I'm here to uh, talk about city facilities. And this presentation, I'm one of, uh, one part of the group. Um, I'm, I work with also Phenomenal She and uh, The Game of Life, who are ran by Calicia, Carlicia and Winston Bell. And um, who, who, he, he's, he's on his way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I just wanted to talk about why we're here and what we're asking for. And then I'll talk about a little bit about Rugged Genius and what we've done in the community. And then when he gets here, he can follow up. So basically, um, a few years ago, um, Rugged Genius did a, um, a show. And little did we know that this show um, really uh, spearheaded a lot of community members to get involved in this process right here. And so what we found out was that um, Knudsen is ran by Center Stage, the nonprofit. I don't know if it is now, but it was then. And so what happened was uh, in that, rest in peace, um, to one of our uh, members, Andre Bullard, um, he actually was the one that was um, handling that that situation and in his untimely past I stepped in and um, we found out a lot of things right Knudsen uh, was being run by center stage they were getting a hundred thousand dollars a year for nine years they were getting a free building and to our dismay um, we paid for services that we didn't necessarily get example um, we had to use their engineer, and so their engineer, we had to pay him $30 an hour. Um, we 
paid him, but all he did was literally just turn the equipment on. And our if if we didn't already have an engineer, we wouldn't have been able to do the show, right? And so we're having to pay thirty dollars an hour, and so it just was very frustrating. And you know, uh, you know that wasn't the end of it. So um, as you know, I'm looking at the numbers and everything, and we go to the city and we find out you know who owns what buildings. And I, and I was told that the city isn't a business, right? So, you know, in our proposal, uh, I, one of the proposals, I think it's the, the, second, um, the second one, not the rugged genius that's talk, talking about who we are, but there was actually a proposal in there because um, during that time, there was a lot of violence that was going on, and the mayor had, had a, uh, uh, what do you call that, a, um, a group of people that got together and they gave him recommendations. And so we, as community members, were like, man, we're already out here. We already have a connection with the, with the youth. A lot of the youth, I coach basketball. Winston, like I said, he has game of life. We're in the community. And so we weren't complaining that, um, that Center Stage had this opportunity. We were just saying, how do we also get that same opportunity? You know what I'm saying? Because we're actually doing the work. And so when we looked at the numbers, they had never had a, sold, a sold out show. You know what I'm saying? We sold out our first show. It was just very interesting. Like uh, Jesse Johnson and I, we did a um, a um, youth forum at Decatur, and the kids said that they wanted to do, they needed stuff to do in the, on the weekends and in the evenings. And so we catered our program to 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 um, uh, address these issues. And it was just something that we knew that they would be into, like media, like they're on TikTok all day. But here we have this state of the art in Condensing. You know, you got the pack. I'm talking about Knudsen. To us, that was state of the art. You know what I'm saying? You had a stage, you had lights, you had sound. Like it was after the show. Um, you know, people kept coming up. When are you guys doing this again? And they were like, "Man, this this was a concert." And we were like, "Yeah, that's what we thought it was because we know that what we could do." And so, if you look at Rugged Genius, um, and you look at who we are and what we stand for. We just said, you know, there's so much negative stuff out here that we wanted to put some positive stuff. And so in this journey, um, we met people who did plays and stuff like that that could reach the kids and do pretty much the same thing that Center Stage was doing, but we really didn't have the access. We didn't know that this was there. You see what I'm saying? And so um, it just, it became one of those things where well, we'll just come and we'll talk to the city and see if they would like to partner with community-based organizations that are in the community that are doing, that's doing the work. And so uh, one of the things with restor restorative practices, um, they were saying, I, I think this, the council was saying that um, we don't know who these people are, but you know who we are. We're, we're here, we've been here. Like in some of the meetings, they were saying rugged genius in every single meeting. But no, nobody, I don't think anybody really knew what we did or who we really were. And so um, we were just saying like, man, if we had some of these resources, we could do a lot more than what we're doing for free and off the, out of our own pockets. And so it was just more so um, just coming to the city and seeing what it was. And so uh, during, excuse me, during the time, it was this big thing about you know funding and where the money's going and we had, we talked score was a situation the city saved like two million dollars and you know the budget stuff right and so we could go back and forth we can go back and forth but we know that the city has buildings you know what I'm saying we know that these buildings are there we know that whatever they're being used for they probably could be used a little bit more you know what I'm saying like where I'm from in North Carolina all the schools they use all of the gyms. So all of the gyms, they're running intramural sports and things of this nature because they're trying to give the community something to do, right? And Tequila, we keep saying we want to be like uh, um, Bellevue, but I keep pointing out that we don't have a Bellevue demographic. Our demographics is more so to uh, um, Tequila or, or uh, um, South King County area. It's, it's not the same as Bellevue. And so in Tequila, their community center is free for the people in Tequila. Like a lot of our kids don't have access to this stuff. And we're saying that we want to make a difference. You know, we're saying that we want 
everything is just the police. That's not what we said. We said let's divvy up the, the resources, really, is what it was, and let's really invest in our community, right? And so um, what would we do with these buildings? Um, Game of Life, they have a um, – so what they do is uh, uh, it's a nonprofit that focuses on, I want to say, 16 to 24, and it's the, these at-risk youth that they're talking about, right? And so I can honestly say, because I go there actually tonight at 7, they'll be at Foursquare Church on 21st, right? At first they were at um, the EX3 money-wise or whatever, for whatever reason, they couldn't go there. Then they were at... Lakota, I want to say, middle school, and then like the summertime went and then we never got back, got another gym. And so then um, now it's kind of like just up in the air and then we just say meet up at the church and then we'll just keep doing what we've been doing. And so one of the things that I noticed was like, like I said, we have buildings, we have classrooms, we have things where organizations like us can come in and grab these kids and have give them something to do which they're interested in already, right? But the people have to have to be able to relate to them. You know, like like the EX3. I remember the EX3 was ran was ran by a friend of mine and he put a lot of the stuff that was in there. He put a lot of the stuff the the, the microphones, the the but what ended up happening was the funding got cut and then um they started having to make money. So then they started renting it out to like AAU teams and stuff like that. So now we have to move some of these other kids out. He used to uh, bus kids from Westway, from Westway and bring them in and they would do tournaments. And so these are the kids that didn't make the, 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 the uh, school basketball team. Maybe they were, got in trouble or their grades weren't good enough, but they still were able to play in a league and compete and do something that they like to do without being in the streets. And so this is what we literally we saw, we heard these chil these kids, these youth say this over and over and over again. I'm, I'm going to speak at uh, Federal Way on Thursday. I went to Decatur um, a couple weeks ago. Like, we're all over the place. The kids are speaking. Uh, uh, Council Member Norton, you heard the kids that spoke in the meeting that we were in. I'm not lying. I'm not making this stuff up. We're just saying that we're just, we're, we have the relationships already and we would like to partner with the city. And I know we only have 15 minutes, so I, uh, I see uh, Winston just got here, so I'm gonna let him finish off and let him uh, say what it is that uh, uh, um, Game of Life and Phenomenal Sheep. But you have the information here if you got, I'm sorry, before I go, do you guys have any questions? Because I don't, like I said, I know we're on a time limit, so I don't wanna. So specifically, what are you asking for? Are you asking to use the um, facilities for free and I'm not familiar with the Knudsen building. Exactly which facilities do you want to use? What days do you want to use them? How long do you need them for? Um, I'm the kind of person where I just need ex very specific information. If you could provide that to me, I would really appreciate it because that could give, give us something to look at and say, hey, you know, we have this availability or we don't. So. Yes, I can definitely do that. Okay. But the 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 what I was going to say was it's easier to say this is what is cuz what I'm essentially saying is is like what Red Center Stage was able to do like I I haven't been able to do it yet, but I wanted to see if they were still in the city's budget and still cuz what happened I I mean you guys was some of you guys was here where they said, you know, they gave them like $5,000 and they still got the building for half the year. Right. And so I'm just saying, like, how do we get any of the buildings that you guys have? We're going to make use of them because the kids, they need somewhere to go. They need something to do. We have programs that have that are that address specific things. So like Rugged Genius, we're specifically media. Right. Excuse me. We're specifically media. So that's classrooms where we can sit and we can talk to the kids about what media is, what media responsibility. I talked about it in here as far as like letting them know, like, uh, Example, one of the kids uh, did a song like, I'm riding around with your girlfriend. And I said, well, why I got to ride around with his girlfriend? How come I can't ride around with my girlfriend? So it's just like making them think about what they're saying, 
right? And so these are the things that we're, we're able to do in whatever, however, we can do plays if we have condensing. We can do the gym if we have uh, 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 the, the, um, the uh, community, center. community center, right? And so we just researched those three buildings and he's gonna talk about what else that he could do. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm and sorry. And then, and so you, you're saying you, you want the spaces on, in the evenings during the week and on weekends. Is that During correct? the summer, Christmas Eve. summer, Eve, all day long. However, however, okay. if you tell us, Lamont, we have these spaces, the kids, we're, we're going to fill them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Council President Coach Mike, did you have a question? Um, yes. I, um, basically, how many, I was reading through your material here, Lamont. Yes. And you said that you have a number of um, people that you would like to, over the year, our program serves 15 to 24. Uh -huh. um, so m m what I'm trying to think of is we have to be fair with everybody. Absolutely. You know? And so we have policies. That, so really what we're talking about is policy for our buildings. Uh -huh. And you know, if we um, provide free for some groups, we have to provide free for all groups uh -huh. in some respect. Uh -huh. So probably what we really need, as Councilmember Norton is saying, and we need to understand you know, um, how many people you're talking about, how many days are you talking about, what buildings are you talking about, and we'll see if we can look at our policy. I, I don't know, but those mm -hmm. are the things we need some specifics about. Absolutely. Thank okay. you for your feedback, and I'm going to let him, I just want to push back. One, policy. Uh, I have oh, a what, question. Oh. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah we're, um, sure, council. I forgot they were over there. Yeah, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Honda. Well, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I, I, did, I totally That's forgot. That's okay. <laughs> That's why I keep doing this. <laughs> no, no problem. So um, Center Stage actually had a uh, management agreement with Knutson Family Theater. So that's why they ran the theater. It wasn't just for their use. It was to manage the entire theater. And then they also used it. Um, I was at the concert that you mentioned. My husband and I were there. So um, it was not the type of music I usually listen to, but it was well done. And as uh, council president said, uh, we would have to be, to be fair and equitable with all groups. For instance, the Rosebud Children Theater, which is now in its 11th year, has had a very difficult time finding a home. And they've bounced between churches, um, different churches. Last year, they were outside. They did their plays um, outside in a park because they couldn't find a building due to COVID and due to other difficulties. So I'm wondering, though, have you talked with the school district? Because I think some of the things you're talking about work better with the school district. And their buildings, their gyms, um, are set up more for, for kids than, for instance, the Knudsen Family Theater would be, and might might work out better. It should be environments the kids are more used to. So have you talked with the school district? Um, so, so just real quick, because like I said, I want him to talk. A couple of things, because I just want to address this and I'm done. One thing, policies are made. So we already know policies can be changed. They can fit whatever it is that we need it for, for them to do. We know this for a fact. What it would take is, is a vote. The other part of it is, is not to push back on what you said, but we're talking about violence prevention. So I don't know what type of work that they do, but we're talking about uh, we're specifically reducing the crime in federal way. I can give you an example. I just spoke to Decatur the other day, right? Oh, I don't have it on. My other T-shirt. So I had a T-shirt. I gave out the T-shirts, right? I see the kid, he's in my neighborhood, he has my t-shirt on. Any other time, I wouldn't even have known that or recognized that kid. But because he has my t-shirt on, they're in the back, like, messing up Safeway. You know what I'm saying? Tagging, doing whatever. I said, hey, you can't do that with that t-shirt on. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what they, what they do. We're talking about violence prevention, which specifically is something that Federal Way really needs to, to think about. So... Well, have you, my, my question remains, have you talked with the schools about using their facility? No, I was, no, no, I was going to let him, I'm sorry, I was going to let I'm going to address some of, I'm sorry. some of that. I'm sorry. I, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, we, awesome. We, Thank you. Um, our nonprofits, Phenomenal She, I'm sorry, I'm Winston Bell, Executive Director of Game of Life. Uh, for those who I haven't met, hello. Uh, um, 
I'm here to kind of uh, finish off and to help express uh, the community, um, our needs for the community and our community-based organizations. Uh, one of the things, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Honda, you just mentioned about the school districts. We have formal partnerships with the school district. Uh, this goes a little further than things that we've already done with the district because it's, it's in essence bringing back the arts to our community. So our partnerships uh, have really, really um, been great connections. The school district, for example, they've called both of our organizations and asked that we partner with them. So this summer we'll be doing uh, two Saturday dance classes for the school district. Uh, I'm leading an emotional fitness uh, therapeutic class for the school district. It's artistic expression. It allows young people uh, to use their artistic expressions to describe what COVID has played in their lives. So um, Starbucks is another one. Uh, their new community space on 320th, they've asked that we come and partner with them to bring stuff to those spaces. So we, we have done this since 2016, and uh, we have on rare occasions come to uh, the city council to ask for support. Uh, our plan is to uh, service the violence prevention and our young people that are getting in trouble through our own efforts. So we've gone out and connected with several partnerships. One has, another has been Sound Transit. Um, their performance and labor agreement specialists have come to us and said, hey, we want you to be our community service provider, not to bring jobs to Sound Transit, but just to get young folks ready to be hired. Uh, that's two. Uh, King County, um, uh, the juvenile probation, that's another one that's come and said Federal Way is our new area that, that kids are being um, referred in droves to us as new folks um, uh, referred to the community, um, the criminal justice system. So uh, we got together about two years ago and said, hey, we want to figure out how to take our community and create special projects for our community by us, for us. Um, since COVID, Phenomenal She and Game of Life, we've partnered with um, uh, one of the lodges out of uh, Des Moines. It is the, I, the name skips me right now, I'm on the spot, but we've served over 30,000 hot lunches since COVID. Um, uh, uh, Lydia Selfadolphison has been past our project, been past our, um, uh, our offices on Dash Point and 312th. Uh, Judge Larson has come by for, uh, to support and a photo op. I always tease him about that. But our efforts have been tried and true in the community. Uh, we are attempting to relieve the burden of the government by uh, education, the arts, and employment. Uh, we have our group around the trades, the electricians union. Uh, they've, they've been wanting to come here to service Federal Way for a number of years. Uh, the conversations we've had with uh, Rep Johnson and um, a couple others were the projects that they presented around pre-apprenticeship trades. So uh, we've done our due diligence, but we just need a home now to service some of our community some of our young people in this community. Questions or thoughts? So um, I met you about a month ago, is that correct? Yeah, right? I think it was about a month, yeah. Um, so what I'm seeing here is I, I don't know anything about the Knutson building. Okay. So is someone currently managing that building right now? I think Deputy Mayor just talked to that. Okay, I did, but I didn't. Do you want to? Do you want to repeat? Do you want to? Um, and when is that management contract up? It's for renegotiation. It, it, the city, the city manages Knutson. It's our building. It's Dumas Bay. Okay. Oh, that's Dumas Bay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a, it's a theater Beautiful. at Dumas Bay. Okay. Beautiful building. And I've never been there before, so you that's have why I'm yeah. unfamiliar. It's with very it. pretty. Okay. Folks come from all around to have retreats. I just did a a, a training for a group. Right. Uh, there. So my question is because if <laughs> as a business owner I, I think the cities and uh, municipalities 
do very poorly at managing and making money. Um, at least that's what I've found so far. And what if you came up with a proposal and presented it to the city council with actual numbers and data and I would be perfectly willing to support you in that and help you um, hold meetings, do whatever I need to do to help you. Um, so I'll, I, did, didn't you give me your card? Did I you? did. Okay. I did. Okay. So I have your card. So I will get in touch with you, and Absolutely. then we can talk. Um, yeah. Because I mean, I ran a nonprofit myself for quite some time, and I. Are you, you're the executive director. I am. Okay. I, so I, you do everything, absolutely. and and so and I know how much of a heart it takes to do what you're doing, um, and so I would love to support you. Um, I also have contacts with the plumbers union. Um, they are trying to get into the city as well so and help with well, youth the, tutoring and all of that so i've got a lot of ideas and I, i'd love right. to meet with you so absolutely um, we've got an electrician's union on board okay. we've gotten uh, the port of seattle on board we just hosted a a, a basketball tournament uh, to where the electricians and the port of seattle came down to todd beamer about three weeks ago okay to hire some of our young men that are in sports that's nice uh nick this this weekend coming up we're doing the same thing at thomas jefferson high school so like i said we've really done our due diligence and created partnerships with strong folks that would okay. and and uh, consequently these trades are now uh, under the gun they have to increase their uh, black and brown uh, jobs in mm -hmm. the next four to five years i believe it is okay uh so that they can receive uh more of the contracts that they have same thing with sound okay. transit so so have you been in contact with leona the labor union i have um, not so there's 252 in and i do plas with them oh, with, gotcha. in my company so yeah. i can put you in contact with them as well yes so uh <clears throat> we'll just we can discuss that Absolutely. outside of chambers just I just want to let we, you know I'm I'm fully in support of what you're it. doing. I appreciate it. We wanted to make sure we got it on record because uh, okay. uh, it's been tough over the last year and a half with COVID because uh, we've been uh, separated or uh, removed from our gym space. So And we're seeing that that's a problem in a lot of major cities in the country. Um, nowhere for young people to go, but they're, uh, the increase for police involvement. We're saying allow us to... Uh, support and police our own young and older people and um, we're finding that we're able to uh, build businesses for them with work incubator space we're able to get them the job uh, we just recently started a business an Amazon delivery business so we're hiring folks to drive for Amazon as well and Amazon's on board with the community project so um, we don't come to speak a lot but when we do uh, we want to make sure we have all our ducks in a row and we have our partners ready to go so that we could help uh, you to help us. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Yeah, so Council President um, oh, Honda you. and then we have that um, on. Chair. Yeah, okay. And then after that, um, mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor, please. Thank you. In that order. Yes. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you, Winston, for being on the uh, committee to Absolutely. select the judge. You did Absolutely. We, we had a good time. We, we, we had fun. Actually, we did. Yeah. Thank uh, you very much. Yes, you yes. Deputy, you. Hon Deputy Mayor Honda. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. yes. We had a great insight. time. Thank you. Well, well, Winston, I, I know where Phenomenal She is down, you know, off Dash Point in three times. But I see where John Hutton looks like he wants to respond to some of the Please. information. Yeah, to, so just a point management. of clarity, Center Stage still has a management contract partnership with the City of Federal Way. Oh. I don't have the expiration date in front of me right now, uh, but we absolutely still have a contract with Center Stage yeah. active right now. Um, they, we they, did make some changes that Council, Council President, or excuse me, uh, Deputy Mayor Honda mm -hmm. talked about where we have the ability to rent space that center stage is not using and as uh, uh, mr styles mentioned center stage is responsible for providing the tech support for those within the contract for it, if we were to rent the facility at Knutson family theater center stage would provide the technical support for that event that would happen on the stage so i just wanted to make sure that it was not appreciate we, they still do have a contract with us mm -hmm. hey, can i just Thank you. add real quick that um, with that, 
So we're, that's what we were talking about because our offer was to actually bring money into the city through what we were doing. And so we were told that the city doesn't make money. That's not the job of the city is to make money because Center Stage wasn't making any money. Our money that we spent to rent the show out went to Center Stage. It didn't go to the city. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what we were like, whoa, 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 hold up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So to that and then and that and, and Okay, okay. I think Deputy Mayor Honda had a question, her hands raised. Should I facilitate as well? <laughs> Council Chair. Council um, I mean committee chair uh, Walsh first and then Deputy Mayor please. All right, uh, Winston and, <coughs> and <coughs> sorry about that. I'm <coughs> <coughs> sorry I'm not able to be there with you. I actually tested positive for COVID this morning. Oh, so wow. I'm, not, I'm isolating and I'm generally. Thank you for isolating. Well, except that uh, well. so occasionally I'm doing a little bit of coughing. So uh, excuse me with that. So it sounds like, uh, just, you know, I want a, a little more clarity. It, uh, Winston, it's not like that you have a close working relationship with the schools and you're in some of the schools. Um, what, um, with that relationship with the, with the schools, how, how would the city be doing things uh, with you that the schools would not be able to do, I guess is my question. I, I just want to have a better understanding of how all the pieces would fit together. Right. Um... The school here, uh, since COVID, they've not been able to uh, do any third party uh, relationships, like have people uh, or groups into their gyms or their auditoriums. So uh, we've been misplaced roughly for about pretty much since COVID. Um, we utilized uh, on Tuesday nights, we do some of our programming at the Northwest Foursquare Church uh, to where we um, feed the young people two times a week uh, in the past and have sports, uh, pro-social activities to kind of keep, uh, keep their minds occupied and keep folks out of trouble. So um, the school district has come to us for behavioral support for some of their young people. Uh, my background is in mental health. I have a private practice in mental health. Uh, everybodycanwin.com is uh, the website for that. Um, but probably about 2016, King County came to Federal Way uh, to speak about uh, the new um, area with the most young people referred to juvenile court. And they asked who the power players were in the community. And I was asked to sit on a committee as the mental health person. So um, I asked, at that time, it was, the, I forget the gentleman who was over uh, EX3 to Teen Center. Uh, and he offered to give us some gym space and we created Game of Life. Um, and it's a, um, a mentoring program that helps young people graduate, get extra credits, um, uh, find housing. It's pretty much a resource for everything young people need. And it, it evolved out of just a need. So uh, we've been able to uh, take from Peter and pay Paul in certain instances. But this is the first time where we've actually come to the city with a, a partnership need. Um, uh, we spoke to, I think it was um, Greg Baruso uh, and, and that group and Martin Moore, and they wanted to fund us for our entrepreneurial class that we were doing with young people. So uh, since COVID, we have really uh, hit the ground running and not allowed any grass to grow under our feet. We were donated three Mercedes Sprinter vans, 11 passengers since COVID, to where we utilize for not only our dance class, but our uh, first fishing program, to where we take kids once a month fishing. We take kids once a month um, backpike, backpacking and hiking. So um, we've pretty much done our due diligence and figured out, uh, we've uh, surveyed the communities, parents and schools. And what we're bringing to you today are their needs uh, for community-based organizations. Thank you Hopefully so much. Hopefully I answered your question with that, Jack. Yes, that, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. And oh, hold on. Also, I think Deputy Mayor so Honda. Oh. No, go ahead. Was someone speaking? You. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Um, 
have you looked at the, the theaters at Federal Way High School and Thomas Jefferson High School? Well, we have not lately. Uh, I actually have. Because they're, they're absolutely stunning. They're, uh, oh, they're, way, absolutely. Yeah. they're top notch. They're, they're absolutely stunning. Um, um, I would, if I were you guys, I would see if I could use those. I mean, they're abs they're beautiful absolutely. and um, fully. I mean, technically, they have everything you'd, you'd ever need. They're top of the line. You know, one of the big reasons for Knutson and the pack at some point uh, is self-esteem. We want our young people to know that Federal Way is their city as well. Uh, we, we have utilized certain school gyms, but uh, probably about 80% of the young people in our programs have played sports for the Federal Way schools. Uh, they've been scholars for the Federal Way school district. And we want them to understand that uh, not only is this their city as well, but they should be able to utilize and shine from some of the major supports that we have in the city. I remember a, a while ago we were doing something around Little League and the same question came up. We have enough uh, small spaces for people to play baseball in Little League, but they just felt like if they had their own space, they would be more uh, equipped to be better at what it was they were doing. And consequently, it's happened. I've seen uh, some of our Little League teams on television playing for the Little League World Series. We're being a therapist and, and, and understanding trauma and trauma of young people, as I'm sure uh, Mr. Walsh can attest. Um, we have to make sure that we are doing everything we can on our end to be supportive of families and communities so that we can help not only relieve the burden, but uh, kind of fix some of these traumas that we're seeing in some of these communities, mainly in the new community that Federal Way has turned into. So <clears throat> I'm a little confused as to what it is that is, do you have a proposal? Absolutely. And it, is that in the paper that you have at the dais? Well, I, I have the proposal with us. Uh, Game of Life and Phenomenal She. Uh, this is an extension of what we've already been doing. So um, our proposal just allows us to spread our reach uh, even a little further. But, uh, do you have a proposal as to what you would like to use and uh, when and? Well, we have the whole. I'm, whole I'm, deal I'm not around. sure. I'm not sure what you're. I'm not sure what you're asking the city to do right now. Uh, we're, we're just asking the city um, uh, to allow us to build our own home here, as far as uh, and I think Senator Claire Wilson. Last time she spoke here, she mentioned Game of Life not having a home, still doing the work, but not having a space or a home. And what that does is that um, discourages young people from coming in to be a part of what it is we're doing. Um, we've heard the same language from the school district. We are wanting to encourage their input rather than discourage. And to speak to what you asked, we do have a proposal around needs time and the type of space we would need. Um, the Federal Way Community Center being another part of that as well for gym space. Let me, let me hear what she has. Um, also, do you, your build, the building over by Dash Point, is that, um, is that not your home? Is, that, or is that, that, what is that used for? I'm, hold on. That, that is used for programming. We feed uh, the community from there and um, we have, actually we have two spaces. The space about two door down, um, we have a uh, computer after school educational class and we do a dance class. Uh, one of the things that we've had to do is use probably 75% of any budgetary of our budget to pay for that type of space. So again, um, any space that we're allowed to use will, will help to um, further our reach and uh, it won't be such a burden on us for paying for rent. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, me, let me say something real quick, because I, I, I have to go. My son has a baseball game. Thank okay. you guys. First of all, I'd like to express thank you guys for your time. Absolutely. I would just like to ask a couple simple questions. Does the city partner with nonprofits and community organizations? 
Do you do that? Yes. Okay. Do. Now, when, if, if I can get a yes to that, does the city have a problem with youth crime in uh, uh, incidents around the city? Do we have an issue with that? Yeah, we do. Right. Do any of the nonprofits and the community organizations that you're partnering with address those issues? No. So some do. So 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 so, yeah, so all I'm so all I'm saying is is I can say this very simply. We're asking to partner. I don't I don't want to. This is not rocket science. You see what I'm saying? We didn't come up here and, and ask for a million dollars. We didn't come up here and ask you guys to build a building for us to use. These are buildings that are already here, right? That are already being managed by companies that we already we already know that we already know we already know the numbers, right? And so I don't want to get emotional, but it's really down to are you willing to partner with businesses, local community organizations that are doing the work. Phenomenal She has numbers. When I saw those little girls come out, Rugged Genius covered a couple of their events. I'm talking about life changing. Every time we don't, we're partnered with the, with the, with the, with the schools. We're partnered with this, the city. That's what we asked. The city. What is the city's uh, uh, commitment to their community? That's all it is. That's all we're asking is what is the city's commitment? Because afterwards, we're not going to come back. To correct what he said, we came back a couple years ago. We were here a couple years ago. We asked for $50,000 for violence prevention. They gave us twenty five. dollars after they just gave Center Stage 100000 for nine years. We didn't complain. We didn't say, oh, you only gave us fifty. dollars We kept doing the work. And we're going to continue to do the work. And I'm going to come back, or we're going to come back, whether whoever's sitting up there and say the same exact thing. We know what can help the city. I, I'm not Lamont, all, Lamont, all I'm asking for is, I'm, I'm, I don't disagree that we can partner with you. I'm just asking, what is it that you're asking us to? We, we to will do? outline it. We will outline it uh, in a proposal around the buildings. Uh, we want okay, a certain that, amount that, of. That's what. That's what we need to see. Yes. That's what we need to see. Yes. Uh, we are having a, a community event on June 18th to celebrate. This is our second annual Juneteenth festival and it will be at Town Square Park. So I encourage everybody to show. I, I, I think a couple of you came last year, but um, uh, the commitment and the uh, overwhelming response to what we're doing in the community has really showed up. So uh, this was a natural next step for what it was that we were trying to do. Any other questions? So right if there are here? no other questions, I do have a comment. You have a question? No, that's okay. I, I, I just agree with them. Deputy Mayor Honda, that we do need to have some proposal in writing. No question about it. And as, as we've said, w we need to be fair with everybody, with yes. you and every single person who walks through our door. No question. No problem about that at all. Um, and so just well, we need to know exactly what it is you're looking for so we can then talk about and, and discuss I the whole issue. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. Any other question? Um, so it's not a question, actually, I have comments. Mm -hmm. and. Thank you both Lamont and Winston for your presentation. I appreciate everything that you do for our community. Absolutely. With or without our, our partnership, you, this is, these are our kids. And so what you're doing is key, very important. You having a space is also important because usually when people move around, it's discouraging. That's right. People miss out because they don't know where to go next time and you know, information gets lost mm -hmm. in that kind of setting. So your, your request is very appropriate. And I, and like uh, you were asked, I, you know, having a proposal or something in place is very important. Absolutely. And so that's all uh, that's been asked, uh, asked Lamont. Um, I don't know about the human services funding cycle if it's too late, but I think that would be a good also way to request. Um, I'm not sure about ARPA funds if this applies just because ARPA fund does not do a continuous, it's a one time. Um, funding resource so i i'm not sure how that really works so it's something we could um um discuss um it would also be great if you could give us regular updates even if it's during public comment time mm -hmm. because when we hear information sporadically then it's 
there's a lot to take in. Totally understand. And mm -hmm. so I would really appreciate if that could be something you would consider doing in the future because I do recognize you're doing a lot, but as you're saying this, like, oh, wow, I wasn't aware. So, yeah. well, it, I, well, I think it's been, um, I, wanna, I wanna use the right word. I, <laughs> I think we have been, we've ostracized ourselves because we've had our heads down just doing the work. So the yes. process of coming to city council and asking for things um, has not been top on our list because the work is so uh, overwhelming at times. So uh, we've had Lamont to be our eyes and ears at a lot of these meetings uh, because uh, anybody that steps out in the community will know that the folks that are really doing the work. Probably within the last couple years, we've had a lot of people come from outside of our area to come in and um, try to get funding to do the work that is already being done by, by the most part. So yeah. we just wanted to, to make sure we had a presence with you all and uh, uh, go ahead. And that's what I'm saying because um, you, you do a lot. And Thank so you. I think when you share that information with us at that podium, the public also understands and hears what you're doing. Absolutely. And so it's not just for the people sitting up here, it's for the whole community. So I think it'd be very um, um, uh, important that you do share that with us. Yep. And I also saw that you do work with, uh, you plan on working with parents and families. Absolutely. I personally would like to get involved at that level because that's what I do um, for my job. Yeah, we have so one I work of the only families. parenting classes that helps you parent your teens, effective adolescent parenting. Um, you know, one of the tough parts is we have a training scheduled with uh, uh, Lieutenant Hodge and um, around effectively communicating across cultures. And that's having his staff to train with Game of Life come in uh, while we have our programming and to have kind of a separate <coughs> in-class training. And we, for the life of us, we have not been able to find space to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, some of the important things that we want to do, we want to make sure uh, it's going to benefit the whole city. So um, that's, that's partly why we're here, to make sure that we can uh, help each other. Yeah, so I, I just want to say your request is valid. It's just Thank that, you, you know, it's it has it's to go the way. Through. Yes. Um, and I also have a personal request of you too. Absolutely. Um, there's an African-American male wellness walk coming up in okay. August. I've already talked to um, Felicia, Cynthia, and um, Ivan. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so it would be great if we could have the people, the, the youth day is that it? you work. It's in August. In August. And it's going to be at Renton Memorial Stadium, mm -hmm. but it's all for all um, African Americans is what it really is about their health, and it's going to be boots. There's going to be a lot of activities, okay, but okay. I would love for you guys to either have teams, whatever it takes. But I'll give you more information. So Please I'm do. asking here publicly for, you, for your involvement and representing Federal Way. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank your you. time. And, yeah. And peace and blessings to everybody in here. <laughs> Jack, get well. Listen, man, uh, we're fighting for Federal Way. Hmm. We love Federal Way. And so we're all citizens and community. That's that's really what it is. So even though it might get uh, passionate, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that you can together. walk to your car. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. not have to lock your doors at home. That's what we're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, yeah. we, we we appreciate your passion and and your and all that you contribute. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you again. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, that's for discussion only, so there's no action that council or this committee needs to take. Next item on the agenda is a uh, report on PAC operations, and Autumn is here to present. Good evening, Council President, Deputy Mayor, and Council Committee members. Thank you for having us this evening. I'm joined by Brian Hoffman, our General Manager. We are providing an update on March and April. As you know, we're back open, and you can see that our events have increased year over year, which is to be expected, and we're continuing to climb. Some of the ones that we've had, our Auburn Symphony Orchestra, our resident artist groups are back in the building, the Federal Way Symphony, Youth Symphony, as well as some PAC Presents events, such as Golden Girls, um, Glenn, Miller, Glenn Miller Orchestra, and a few others to name them through the list. Also, over the last couple of months, we've started moving forward on our um, update to our art 
landscape project and several building um, maintenance issues that we've been dealing with. So those are exciting to update you guys on. As you'll see over the next four weeks, all of the landscaping will be updated and all of the art grass, uh, Deputy Mayor, that you've been wondering about will be put back and beautiful at our building. So I will let Brian take over and give you guys a few more updates. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having us. Um, really, a, lo a lot of uh, everything's kind of there, what we provided in the packet, and uh, here to answer any questions or anything that anybody has on any particular thing that was provided to the council members. Um, as Autumn said, um, up running and um, you know going full bore um, with a lot of events um, that we've had and we'll move forward with in May, June, and July, and then mark your calendars for uh, middle of August for our fifth year anniversary celebration. So uh, the pack has been open for five years this August. So very exciting, and we're working on uh, a fun community weekend. Thank you. Any questions? Um, I see that. <clears throat> um, Gosh darn, thank you very much. I know this is not finance, but I'm, I'm wondering, um, what's your expected revenue for this year? That What do you expect in revenue this year? So right now, it's uh, very early as we run on a calendar year. So to give you an exact number, um, it would be um, inconsistent to do that at this time. We're finishing our, finalizing our March um, financials as we speak hope to have them by early next week mm -hmm. as um, we are in the process of transitioning with a new director of finance that just started a week ago so um, so to give you a number don't know um, <clears throat> so what I'd like to have uh, over time and thank you, you have wonderful events I don't have a problem with that I, I just need to get a handle on the amount of money that the expenditures and revenue uh, for the pack and I, I know your contract is how much per year our my contract or Your Spectra Benny Management? Yeah. It's uh, $5,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And um, we pay that no matter what comes in or out, correct? Correct. correct. Uh, That's so, part of the operating budget that's yeah, provided yeah. by the city. Mm -hmm. And I believe this year was uh, around $911,000 subsidy. Yeah, 900, and we're, we're spending 911 in the subsidy. Correct. For the building on top of the 5000 per month. That's included. Included in the Correct. Well, but hmm. so um, revenue over and oh, it's over and above. It doesn't cover that, is what I'm trying to. Correct. There is a subsidy. Uh -huh. So perhaps over a six-month period, maybe not, maybe the three, not the first quarter, but the second quarter, because we really went no, we just came out of COVID. So we, maybe the first half year, we need to have kind of an estimation of how things are going. Yes, we do provide that on a monthly basis in a, what we call our forecast, um, which again, I only have January and February fully completed. We will have March completed by middle of next week mm -hmm. to provide that at FedRAC or however That's you see fine. fit. Yeah, thank you, FedRAC, thank you. And just quickly to follow up on that, our Performing Arts and Event Center budget is included in the city's uh, financial packet that you guys receive at FEDRAC. It's the 115 fund. I don't remember what page it's on. But their detailed financials with revenues and expenditures are in there, um, all inclusive. So anything that has to do with the Performing Arts and Event Center is within that packet at FEDRAC. Um, and we're happy to detail those and answer any questions at these meetings if you guys have them after FEDRAC and go dive a little bit deeper as we move through the next couple of months or the rest of the year. Thank you. Um, Chair Walsh. Uh, uh, just a quick question. I had a constituent ask me this last week, uh, and it's not uh, asking basically what happened that we lost the Tacoma Ballet at the, at the PAC. The Tacoma City Ballet hasn't been with the Performing Arts and Events Center since 2018, and that was a choice of their own. They renegotiated their contract down in Tacoma, I believe, and continued their performances down there. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Honda. Uh, thank you. So when you talk about landscaping, our, is everything going to be weeded and pruned and ready for the summer season, even that, down on by the sidewalk? 
That is correct. So you'll notice over the next six weeks, the entire pack property as well as down on the sidewalks will be fully weeded and brought back to what we were doing pre-COVID now that our budgets are fully rolling again. And who's gonna be doing the planting of the art um, installation? Uh, Spectra has contracted with a landscaping company to come in and plant. There's about 2,500 plants that need to go into that um, specific bed. Are they the same type of plants that were planted before? They were, they're not the same type of plants that were planted before. We went to Arts Commission right as COVID was starting, um, March or April of 2020. Um, Steve Eichert had created a new landscape plan that played on the same visual that we had originally negotiated, but gave us the opportunity to have plants that would sustain in that area. There's a lot of direct sunlight in that area, so when we went back to the Arts Commission for their vote on the new plan, we wanted to make sure that we didn't put more money into something that was going to die again. We also come, came to find out over the last few weeks we did not have enough irrigation in that planting bed, so we didn't have enough watering happening anyway. We have since updated that to ensure that the new process that we're doing, they're going to stay. That was my next question is irrigation. Yeah. So that's it'll all been be updated irrigated, and fixed. It'll be weeded. Yeah. It'll be fed. It'll survive. It'll be beautiful. I appreciate that. Yes. I can hardly wait. Um, are you finding that there, you're having any parking issues at the PAC at this point? Uh, people there visiting and having an event there, are they having finding enough parking? Um, for during the day, uh, regular business hours, we do not see um, an issue, knock on wood, yet with, um, you know, just random people parking there. Uh, we do see individuals that are utilizing the staircase for exercise or walking down to the park or something like that. Um, there is a early class at about 6 a.m. that they come out and kind of run the steps. So if anybody wants to join them, um, but um, you know, it, for, for, <laughs> for, for certain events, um, you know, it, it gets pretty busy. If, if we have five, six, 700 um, people in attendance, we have 172 spots with eight uh, ADA compliant spots on property. Um, so okay. folks do find parking um, elsewhere, uh, whether it's uh, across the street or, um, you know, in different locations. But so to answer your question, yes, we do on occasion have uh, challenges with parking. Um, on Sunday, April 30th, we had a little bit of a challenge. We had over 500 people for a three o'clock matinee, and then we had an eight o'clock performance. So as one group is leaving, more patrons are coming in. Um, so, you know, again, that's few and far between, but um, all in all, uh, I think that, uh, you know, we don't see too, too, too many issues. Um, in that regards. So when they have to find alternate parking, do you talk, talk to them about other spaces that they can go? We do not. There is signs on PVR that there's an overflow lot um, uh, across from Walmart. Um, that That okay. is it. There's no other signage that the PAC provides to say additional parking here, uh, lot A, B, C, et cetera. Okay, thank you. Thanks for being here today. I appreciate it. Chair Walsh, do you have another question? Your hand's still up. I just forgot to put my hand on. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no worries. Sorry. I do have one question. Um, I've noticed that I think your your um, the performances lately have been either sold out or close to being, um, which is great. Do we or have we considered giving tickets at low cost or no cost for people who are who otherwise won't be able to attend these events? So it depends on the event. If it is a PAC Presents um, performance, we do have various pricing structure for seniors, for students, um, for um, youth that, uh, that depending, and those are lower price or percentage off, $5 off, $10 off, et cetera. Um, if it's a, a user group that rents the facility, such as the Federal Way Symphony, the Federal Way Corral, the Auburn Symphony, or uh, this past weekend we had two out of the three days concerts or third party user groups, they set the pricing, we as the PAC do not. So it depends, uh, it varies by show. 
So with, okay, so I understand with youth, maybe can the families come then with their youth or is, it just, is the discount just for the youth? The discount is just for, for the youth, um, but we do have, uh, again, family discounts depending on the show um, that, that we provide. It, it varies show by show. I think it would be great if that's something we could focus on at some point because there are a lot of families who I'm sure would enjoy to be there, but they can't. So just a thought. If there are no more questions, I think this is information only. So thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. And then next item is Sacagawea Park, PSC easement. I guess Jason's not here, so we're going to hear from Director Hutton. Jason is out this evening, unfortunately. Um, before I start, I'd just like to say I root hard and shamelessly for parking problems at the PAC, because that means we're packed, and that's a good thing. Um, so uh, people definitely find a way, as Brian said. Uh, they always park. We never have anybody miss a show because they couldn't find a parking spot. So um, before you this evening is um, a very uh, brief um, agenda bill that is regarding a easement that we're doing with PSE. Uh, it's over by Sacagawea on 16th, and it's a very small area on a slope where they're just, they've moved for some right of way that they're doing public works. They've moved uh, some poles just a few feet in toward our property, not a problem at all. And the only easement uh, effect here is guy wires to make sure that the poles are safe. It's only about a five foot by five foot area, almost not enough to even bring to you, but uh, we decided to bring it to you. It has no effect on park use. It has, uh, there's no ill effect at all. Um, and it is on a sloped area that's unusable anyway. So uh, uh, the recommendations are before you to approve the proposed e easement or do not approve it and uh, provide direction to staff. There's maps and photos involved, but this has no impact on the park or the usability of the park whatsoever. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? I move that we uh, forward the proposed. Forward it to the, uh, the city council meeting for uh, May 17th. 17th. May 17th meeting, yes. Consent right. agenda for approval. Thank you, Erica. <laughs> Motion, would anybody second. like to make a second? It's been motion and um, second. Are there any more discussions? <laughs> if not, you wanna, we wanna vote? Yes. <laughs> For approval, okay. Aye. Aye, aye. And aye. <laughs> so motion passed unanimously and thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for being a good team player. <laughs> okay, are there any other topics or anything for discussion? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so I guess this ends our uh, meeting. Our next meeting is gonna be June 14th at 5 p.m. And I hope you feel better. Yes, Jack, feel Chair better. Chair Walsh. Yes, and Lydia, thank you for filling in. Erica, thank you for uh, <laughs> teasing you like I always do. For her partner. <laughs> and with that, we are adjourned at 6.03 p.m. Best meeting Thank ever. you so much. Good job, Lydia. Bye, everyone. <laughs>